I was at a point at working for the church I love where the thought of staying at that church made me feel depressed. But the thought of leaving the church made me feel depressed. And I was at a very, very stuck point. Um, and it, it happened where I got to a point where it would hurt my mental health to stay at the church more than it would hurt me to leave, where it felt like I, for my mental health, I needed to leave. So I made the difficult choice to leave and it was really hard. Just, I really did feel depressed and lost and lonely and missed my people and it was hard. Um, and that's where, you know, fast forward, it's been about six and a half years since then. And I have, I'm now at a very different spot. This is season three, episode 17 of the Missional Marketing Podcast. Was that kind of dramatic? Maybe it was a little dramatic. It's not just season three, episode 17 of the Missional Marketing Podcast. It is episode number 100. That's right. This is the 100th episode of the Missional Marketing Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the show. My name is Bart Blair. I am a digital strategy coach at Missional Marketing and the co-host of the podcast. And uh, my co-hosting partner, Jason Hamrock, who is the CEO of Missional Marketing, he and I uh, started talking weeks ago about what we were going to do for this special 100th episode. And I'm going to share that with you in just a moment. Before I do, I just want to remind you that the primary reason we do this podcast is to help your church grow by leveraging digital marketing and effective communications. That's the tagline that we use in this show every single week. Today's episode is a little bit different, and I think that you're going to understand why. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, make sure that you do that wherever you're listening, your favorite podcasting app, or uh, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss future episodes. Um, the conversation that we're going to share with you today is something completely different than anything we've ever done on this show before. In fact, if you look back at our archives, you'll see that we have interviewed church communications professionals, church leaders. Jason and I have had conversations between the two of us about church marketing and communications initiatives. Um, but this conversation that we're going to share with you today is actually one with a few of our team members at Missional Marketing. Jason and myself and two other gentlemen, Zach and David, sat down to have a conversation about mental health and specifically about depression. Um, the reason that we decided to do this is that we actually had this conversation with our entire staff team at Missional Marketing just a few weeks ago. We meet every month and we talk about things that matter in the workplace. And because we're a virtual company, we don't get to spend a whole lot of time with one another in person. And so every month we take some time to kind of address issues, things that might be disruptive in our lives, things that might make it more difficult for us to, to work. We talk about our work environment and the technical things that we're doing but we always want to talk about some of the things that really matter to us the most. And in this particular um, conversation that we had last month, uh, David and Zach shared a little bit of their story about dealing with um, depression and some mental health issues, specifically while they were on staff in churches. And um, the four of us sharing in this conversation have all been on staff in churches. We've been pastors and we've been church leaders. And we know that so many of you who are listening to this find yourself in the same seat. You are on staff in a church. And maybe, just maybe, you have wrestled with or are wrestling with maybe some depression or some mental health issues. Um, disclaimer, we're not professionals. We get to that in the podcast. Um, and I do, before we even get to the show, um, want to let you know that if you are struggling with mental health, we really hope that you will uh, seek out help. But most importantly, if you are struggling with thoughts of suicide or self-harm, just pause the podcast right now and dial 988 and you can get help. That's a number that everybody needs to know, whether that's you or someone that you know and love, dial 988 to get help. Uh, this is the most serious thing that we can share with you as it relates to mental health, depression, anxiety, anything that you might be struggling with. It's a suicide helpline and uh, it's free uh, 24 hours a day uh, and you can get the help that you need if it's something that you need. Uh, we love our friends, David and Zach, who joined us on the show today. We think that you're really going to appreciate and love what they share with us. 
Um, apologies, David was having some internet issues. And so uh, oftentimes his mic was sort of cutting in and out and he led a great deal of the conversation. But I still think that you're going to be able to get a lot out of it. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, uh, there's actually a PowerPoint presentation that he's walking through. So if you're listening to this, you might want to, uh, and you don't catch everything, you might want to go over to our YouTube channel so that you can actually see the screen, see the slides. Um, and uh, we'll actually put the, uh, a link to the slides uh, in the show notes uh, so that you can download them if you want to review the statistics and some of the, the symptoms and some of the things that David shares in the podcast. Again, thank you so much for tracking with us here in the Missional Marketing Podcast. We hope and we pray that what we're doing is not just helping you be a better church communications professional, um, but it's helping you better be a better Jesus follower. And uh, I'm hopeful that this conversation today will help you do that. So without any further delay, uh, here's uh, Jason Hamrock, the CE of Missional Marketing, and our conversation with our teammates at Missional Marketing, David and Zach. Well, welcome to the 100th episode of our podcast. We are so excited to be at number 100. And so Bart and I have been doing this for a long time, and we've had a lot of different guests. We've had a lot of different topics. And so we've kind of reached a milestone. We're excited about it. And I'm really excited about today's topic. It's uh, it's one that, you know, I guess I, I'm not excited about it, but I am excited to talk and educate and, and get into some dialogue about it because it's an issue that is, is uh, all over the place and it affects everybody. And um, uh, we're going to dive into it. Today, we brought two amazing guys. I love these guys. They're our dudes. Uh, Zach, who's on our missional marketing team, and David, who's on our missional marketing team. And um, these these guys are both uh, coaches of ours. And uh, uh, Zach does a ton with our comms, con stuff. And David does a ton with our research and development. But they're both coaches. So they get to work with churches as well, just like Bart and I get to do. And um, so we we invited them to talk today about um, an issue that you probably have dealt with this, or you definitely know somebody who's dealt with this, and that's that's mental health. Um, and and it's it's you know obviously in the church it it, it affects everybody and anybody. And so I we just want to kind of dive in today, and I know we're we're gonna have a really good topic of conversation here. I hope through our conversations you'll learn something maybe about yourself, or certainly, you know, a coworker or a friend or family member who's going through these kinds of issues. And it'll give you some, you know, some good information. Maybe you could share this podcast with them. That'll help them. And so let's dive in. Um, let's, let's first introduce our guys. Let, let them take a minute to introduce themselves. So Zach, why don't you go first? And then we'll have David go. Yeah, um, my name is Zach Bernauer. I'm a coach along with working with comms communication and um, working to grow that product within us. Currently, I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, um, just hot off the heels of moving from St. Louis, Missouri. So um, just out here living life and trying to build missional, market, missional marketing along with the kingdom of God. Yeah, and you also, you're involved in churches and I mean, you know, you went out to St. Louis to help kind of plan a church, right? And do that kind of thing. Now you're back in, in good old Philly. Um, Eagles are doing pretty good. Um, yeah, they're, and, doing, uh, they're doing decent this year. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So that that's really cool, man. And, and Zach's a great, great team member of ours. We're, we're so excited to have him and his all he brings to the table. David, um, introduce yourselves. And if you want to go ahead and tell them where you live and who you cheer for. You can do well, that. Well, where I live is exciting. That's Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> I, who I cheer for, eh, it depends. I'll tell you <laughs> this. Right now, we have a really good baseball team and a really, really good basketball team. We also have a football team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll let you know that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my wife here about 12 years ago, been a part of a, a few church plants. And uh, and then I, I worked at a, a, a multi-ethnic church for a few years uh, after that. And now I work for Mission Marketing. And I, uh, I work on a team that's like the mad scientist team. We're trying to think about what the church needs next and always trying to be on the cutting edge so we can offer the best, most amazing stuff to churches. Yeah. Yeah. Both you guys are, are awesome. Okay. All right. So I'm going to uh, push you for just one second. David yeah. is actually a repeat guest on the podcast. And yes. I, I just want to highlight that the last time that David was on the show, 
Uh, he had just finished his doctorate. So he is Dr. David Thorne. That's uh, true. He had just finished his doctorate and he came and shared about how to build volunteer teams for your communications department. We'll link to that episode in the show notes mm. because it's actually one that I've referred a lot of churches to um, over mm. the last year or so since we did that one. So David, thanks for being on the show. Oh, and I should probably say this, even though David is a doctor and all of us have been on staff in churches and all of us have probably to some degree dealt with and wrestled with maybe some mental health challenges, we are not experts in this area. So here's our disclaimer. Uh, we're just here to share a little bit of stuff that we've learned along the way share a little bit from our own personal experience. Um, and I would just, it would be, I think we'd be remiss not to say that um, um, beyond what you hear and what you uh, learned from us today, from our story and from our experience, um, we highly recommend that if you're really challenged with stuff in this area that you seek professional help. Um, and uh, I just wanted to make sure that we, we kind of put that out there uh, because we want to be helpful uh, in what we're doing here today. But um, yeah, we're amateurs at this. We're just we're just some dudes living life, trying to follow Jesus and get the most out of it. So with that yeah. being said, let's turn things over to David. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, thanks for for uh, all of that. And so we're talking about mental health. And we actually talked about this as a, uh, a as a mental, missional marketing staff the other week. And we just all came away from that saying, wow, we all needed to hear that. And so that's kind of the heart with which we share this. Um, we're going to talk about the idea of mental health, but also like specifically depression. And uh, I know when it comes to like the the winter, uh, it's a time when like, depression become more prevalent. For example, in Cleveland, um, that bright, shiny orb in the sky that many people enjoy disappeared for about five months. <laughs> and it, I'm in a place like uh, Cleveland where, you know, people get a little down. And if you're a church staff or work for a church or connected with church or just a human being, um, it might be something you or someone you love might be dealing with right now, which is the heart with which we want to share with you stuff that we talked about as a staff. So, uh, with that, I'd like to actually start with Zach sharing uh, his story and sharing a little bit about his background when it comes to uh, depression. So, Zach, I know you and I have talked. Um, could you share a little bit about your story when it comes to depression? Yeah, I think um, depression is something that I remember dealing with even as a young kid. Um, and I think I lived by the impression that once you get saved, the depression kind of goes away. But <laughs> if it doesn't go away when you get saved, it's definitely going to go away when you start ministry. Um, because, you know, pastors can't be depressed. Pastors can't have anxiety or, or hardships. Um, so I remember being about um, seven, eight years old and just being very sad all the time. Um, most of the other kids around me were very happy and seemed to have no cares. But I um, was just felt like this, this deep sadness that really never seemed to alleviate. Um, and then fast forward into my college years. I actually um, was in my sophomore year. I was high achieving. Um, I like to say I have high functioning depression. Um, I was taking overload classes. I was doing the whole ministry thing. I was traveling with a, um, a traveling choir. And it was one morning I was getting up and getting ready to go to class. And it felt like a lightning bolt just hit my body and I collapsed in the shower. And um, that's the start of what I thought was probably a mental breakdown. I spent probably a year and a half in counseling. The school was gracious to give me about a month in that semester to go back home and kind of recoup. And I kind of put the pieces back together. And then a few years later, I go into ministry and I uh, start as a student pastor in a small town called Livonia, Georgia, right outside of um, Atlanta. And if you know me in any capacity, you know that i um, I am not a farm boy. I'm not a even a Southern boy. And I was living in the chicken um, farming capital of the world. <laughs> and so all, automatically there was already this disconnect. And um, being 22 years old and uh, a youth pastor and trying to navigate uh, basically digital media and um, within our church, in addition to having a very fast growing 
uh, youth group really took its toll on me. And so over the next few years, I really felt depression kick in. And then um, ministry is hard. You deal with the criticisms and the rejections and being about 15 hours away from my family. It was a really kind of difficult season of life. And then COVID happened. And now instead of going into an office, I'm now living by myself and having to completely take our church online and workless hours and sleepless nights trying to do that. And I just really felt um, my mental health really deteriorating. And so it was through that process, I saw a doctor and realized there is some chemical imbalances that I deal with. Um, in addition to seeking out counseling, which allowed me to um, process through some things. And it's kind of something even now I try to keep on top of with making sure that my mental health is in top condition, because if it's not, sometimes I can find myself in a low place. Mm. Yeah. And um, I, I was actually going to share a little bit about for, for me personally of, of even my like church story, because it plays into this is um, there's been times where I, I've actually, I, I've taken medicine for depression. I, my, my in a seminary was actually one of those times I said it, it kind of felt like if you're on a roller coaster and there's low emotions and high emotions, I could like I knew there were high emotions, but I couldn't touch them. It just felt like they were out of reach. And another time that I really experienced some low times is I was working at the church plant that I loved. And I, I mean, I worked really hard every single day for eight years, um, but I really started to get burnt out. And um I had the realization that there was, I, I had worked for two years and had only missed one Sunday out of those like two years. And I had not taken very much time off. And it was partially on me that I just wanted to prove that I could work really hard. And I was going to, I cared about it so much and I, I wanted to do a good job um, for our lead pastor. I was like the uh, executive pastor. Um, I was at a point at working for the church I love where the thought of staying at that church made me feel depressed. But the thought of leaving the church made me feel depressed. And I was at a very, very stuck point. Um, and it, it happened where I got to a point where it would hurt my mental health to stay at the church more than it would hurt me to leave where it felt like I, for my mental health, I needed to leave. So I made the difficult choice to leave and it was really hard. Uh, just, I really did feel depressed and lost and lonely and missed my people. And it was hard. Um, mm. And that's where, you know, fast forward, it's been about six and a half years since then. And I have, I'm now at a very different spot. But it just means I, I, I share that story because of how many people are listening to this podcast who could be in a very similar spot. And this podcast is for you. Um, yeah. So I wanted to, to mention that. And with yeah. that, I kind of wanted to go more specifically into how do we know what we're experiencing actually is depression? And how do we know what we're experiencing is just kind of like down times? So I want to talk about a few things here. And this is what I want us just to be aware of. If you're feeling down right now, you're not alone. Um, just so you know, like overall in America and across the country, the median age when uh, depression is diagnosed in somebody is 32. So that's mm. pretty old. Um, I mean, it's not super old, but you know. <laughs> There's a lot of people who are 32 years old. It's all about perspective. It's not like 10. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> oh, it, it to be 32 about, again. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, 35% of adults um, don't receive treatment. So it's just saying that there's a lot of people, and I bet the number of pastors is even higher because we feel like it's probably our problems aren't as as other people's and the people's that we talk to talk to. Um, out there, but chances are they may need some outside help. <clears throat> it's the number one depression is the leading cause of disability in the United States. 
So there's a lot of people who are out there who are not treating or acknowledging or handling depression, and it becomes debilitating and a reason why you actually can't work. Um, 50% of people have a chance of having a, a second episode of depression. So if you've ever experienced in the past, there's a very good chance that maybe what you're experiencing right now is actually depression. There are six major symptoms of depression. You feel down time. You're absolutely exhausted. Nothing feels fun anymore. You don't feel those high notes. Uh, your current status, couch potato. Your <laughs> weight is way up or way down. And then lastly, the guilt won't go away. It's worth kind of noting, how do we know whether what we're experiencing is actually depression or it's just winter blues? So winter blues, maybe you feel a little bit down. Depression, you feel very down. If you feel the winter blues, you're able to bounce back. Maybe you're down for a few days, but you bounce back. When you have depression, you don't bounce back. Blues is somewhat disruptive to normal life. Depression, very disruptive. Mm. With blues, you mostly continue with your normal work, sleep, recreation patterns. When you're experiencing depression, it's going to interfere with work, sleep, and recreation. It's going to impact your daily life. With blues, you might feel a little, little lethargic and unmotivated. Uh, with depression, lethargy and lack of motivation becomes a major part of your day. Um, and then finally, blues, you may feel down here and there. With depression, you're going to feel down most of the time. Taking this actually a little bit deeper, I, I want to share something that I, I got from the Diagnostical Statistical Manual number five, which is the most recent um, psychological diagnosis uh, manual. Try saying Diagnostical Statistical <laughs> Manual five times fast. Um, you and your car or whoever is listening to this, go ahead and try. Pause and just try Diagnostical Statistical Manual. Say that five times fast. Um, but it mentions there's a whole list of things that are symptoms a person could experience. And the idea is that if you experience about at least five of these for at least two weeks, then you may have a noticeable case of, of depression. Um, it's things like actually what we just mentioned, like a depressed mood, a okay. um, diminished interest, pleasure in things you used to enjoy, significant weight loss, gain, slowing down of your physical activity, um, fatigue, loss of energy every day, feelings of worthlessness or excessive, that guilt coming from nowhere, a diminished ability to concentrate. Um, recurrent thoughts of death or recurrent societal ideation without a specific plan, but just the idea of, of thinking about uh, ending your can be a, another um, symptom. And it's just saying that the DSS uh, 5 says if you experience any of those for at least five of them for at least two weeks, then you may uh, be have a diagnosable. Uh, depression. And it's just saying, um, if, if, if I, as I'm saying these things, if you're like, that's me, that's me, that's me. If you start saying that's me about, you know, three, four or five times, it might be worth pausing and chatting with someone, chatting with a friend, making an appointment with your doctor or, or counselor, um, especially if you are a pastor, because you're probably uh, laying off how you're feeling and saying it's not as bad as it probably is. There's various causes of depression. And I think it's worth just noting these. It can be things like genetics, your body chemistry, a significant life event, trauma, unaddressed trauma, hormone changes, medicines you're taking, substance abuse seasons, like in, Cle in Cleveland when the bright orb in the sky disappears. Uh -huh. Everyone gets depressed uh, or just happens sometimes. So just to saying that if you are experiencing 
depression. There can be all kinds of causes. And when you can think through what could be causing it, it can help you address what do you do in response of, to those causes. Mm. So let me just uh, I'll pause here. And I, the last thing that we, we talked about as a staff, and it could be something that we talk about here as just the, the four of us here, is what, what are ways, and Zach, I want to think about, ask you this. Would you have any suggestions for when you're working with somebody who has depression or, or you may think could be struggling with depression? How might you suggest we should work with who is struggling with that? Yeah, I think a big part of it is um, with us, we live, um, we will all work from home. So we're kind of isolated from one another. Um, so something that our staff kind of works to do is connect with one another on social media, um, whether it be the be Facebook, Instagram, be real. I know that a couple of our females, they uh, use uh, Marco Polo to talk to one another during the day. So they share updates from their family, their individual lives, maybe some work updates through through video messaging that they can listen to almost like a podcast as they're getting ready and then respond. And so I think making sure that everyone feels a sense of connectivity and feels seen, especially when we work from home, a lot of the times we're just trying to get tasks done or move one project to the next project that we can kind of miss the individual that's doing that. So taking time just to to connect and check in with one another, being strategic in your schedule. Um, and then another thing is a lot of people, especially in, in our company, we're very high achieving, high working. Um, it's easy for us to miss those breaks and to kind of burn ourselves out. So if you're noticing some of your coworkers aren't taking time off or working late nights, or you're always seeing emails coming in way after work hours, checking in with them and saying, do you need some time off? Do you need rest? Do you need break? How can we alleviate your workload so that you can feel a sense of relief and enjoyment coming to work rather than it being something that is a source of contention? Yeah, I'd probably throw in there as well. Um, you know, prayer works really well too. So always be mindful and then just ask somebody if they, if you can pray with them and uh, be a friend, right? Doesn't, you know, doesn't matter if you're a mile away or a thousand miles away. I think that's pretty important. And if you take those, uh, those nuggets, what you just share with us, David, and thank you, by the way, um, we probably know somebody from time to time that might be struggling with something or they we hear about somebody lo losing a loved one or something like that and that's going to be uh that's going to be a sign right there to pay attention yeah there's there's a, a lot that goes into you know the colleague uh accountability or colleague support you know we're very fortunate that we have worked intentionally or are working intentionally to have a corporate culture, a, a, a work culture that allows people to to say, I'm not okay today. And yeah. we and, and we want that place to be safe. You know, if you're a if you're a staff member in a church, we recognize that not all, as much as we hate to say it, not all church staff environments are healthy environments. The four of us have all worked in mm -hmm. churches and experienced very different things. You know, David shared mm -hmm. that uh you know, some of his experience. And I, I know, I know more of David's story than he actually told, uh, than he was sharing. And, you know, some of it was a result of David being a high achiever and wanting to do well. And some of it was not being in the healthiest uh, work environment. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, in my own personal experiences of depression and anxiety that came as a result of ministry work, I was actually working in very health, healthy environments. I just put so much stinking pressure on myself that I drove myself to a place of not being healthy. But if you're a if you're a staff member in a church, uh, maybe it's not a, a safe place for you to share with your colleagues or your coworkers, um, which is a shame. Um, and, and you definitely need to look for help outside of the work environment. If you're a solo pastor or a pastor with a small staff, it might not necessarily be the right thing to do to share within your team. But we hope that if you are a leader of a staff, that you are working to create safety 
uh, in your work environment so people can share when they're not doing well. Uh, because the first step in getting better is always admitting that you need help to get better. Yeah, I, I, and I know it's it's a really uh, obviously a very growing concern and in inside the church staff uh because it you know i think it used to be kind of taboo to talk about it years ago but these days no you you need to address it um one of my good friends runs a ministry called full strength network marty sawyers and uh Mar marty and i are good friends i probably need to have him on the podcast part but full strength network you should and check that out and, and have your, your leadership team check it out. They offer churches a subscription where the church staff now has access, private access to a counselor, a, a certified licensed counselor. And so uh, the, the, that doesn't get reported back to the church. They don't share numbers like, oh, we had David here. He's had five sessions. No, they don't do any of that, right? That's It's private. <laughs> but the fact that the church knows that now the staff has a resource and an outlet to talk to somebody on a very confidential, you know, private level is growing. Uh, but Marty has brought on, I mean, he's, the, he's the CEO of the company. He's brought on just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of churches. And he's only been there for like a year um, because lead pastors, exec executive pastors understand that this is a real issue and I need my staff. And I, I, I'm the same way. I need these guys healthy. I want them healthy for their family. I want them right with God. Cause it, when that's right, then, then they're going to do the best they can here at missional marketing. So it's, it, it's, it's both. I, I, I really, really want them to get the kind of help they need. And I, I a pastor has the same mentality or they should, I hope they would have that same mentality that I want my staff um, thriving, you know, and and I know they work hard. We we understand how hard ministry is, right? We've all <laughs> worked in ministries. We wear like a bunch of hats and it never stops. The show must go on and on and on. And uh, you really have to take that minute. You got to take that time to, to get to seek the help that, that, uh, that you need. So full strength network is one of them. And then uh, Bart, you want to explain another one that you, yeah, our friend Dale Sellers and the folks over at the 95 Network have oh. actually, I think, just this year launched um, a component of the support that they provide for churches uh, called Soul Care Essentials. And if you just mm. Google 95 Network, I think their website is 95network.org. Uh, there's a button on the homepage that says Soul Care Essentials. Uh, they exist to help the normal size church in America, they're called 95 Network because 95% of the churches in the country are under 500 people. Those are the churches that they are aiming to serve and they want to help church leaders be healthy. They have committed so much time, energy, and resource to helping churches get healthy, but have come to the conclusion that a church cannot be healthy if the leader is not healthy. And so right. they have a, a concerted yeah. effort to help uh, leaders get healthy. And the last thing that I want to I, I want to mention, and then I'll pass things back over to David and Zach for their parting shots, um, is if you are listening to this uh, and you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, uh, self-harm, 988 is the number you dial, and you yeah. should dial it right now. Um, as someone yeah. whose life has been forever changed by suicide, uh, it's not worth it. It's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. So yeah. 988 is the number that you dial. Yeah. David? Yeah. Um, and, and just saying that, uh, man, we love the church, and, and that's where, why we do what we do. And that's where um, I, my only thought that if you're in a church that isn't healthy and it's impacting your uh, mental, spiritual health, it's okay to be honest with that. And, and that's where I actually, I mentioned to Bart that I, I was in a church that at a certain point, it was pushing me to unhealthy. And there's a, a, a day where I got yelled at for no reason. And I just kind of snapped and drove directly to a counselor and realized that I could not handle my 
being treated the way I was for one more day in my life, that I, it was not worth being in a negative spot for even one more day. And that's why I just, you know, for, for some people out there, just understanding that if you're in an unhealthy place and uh, with an unhealthy, unhealthy church situation, um, understand that not every place is unhealthy and that you deserve to be in a place that treats you well, where you are cared for, where your family is cared for, where your mental health is, 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 is cared for. And, and you deserve that. You, Zach? Yeah, I would um, echo that. I think for me, I came to a place where ministry was causing more harm than than good in my life. Um, I wasn't set up in a place, um, even internally, to continue to handle those pressures. And and all of us pastors, we we joke that um, we're good, everything's fine, we're blessed, highly favored, all the all of that. But the reality is, is that a lot of us never get to take off the hat. We um, go on vacation, but if we're missing a service, our mind knows exactly when service starts and when service ends. Um, and we experience major extremes of emotions in, in a moment. I remember one time I went to a hospital and um, was visiting someone that was probably about to go on hospice. And then once I left that room, I walked down the hallway and uh, visited someone that just had a baby in our congregation. And so the vastness of emotions that we experience of people's um, lives that aren't even ours, it doesn't even begin to touch the complexity that we experience. And so there are points where you do have to make that leap of faith. For me, when I uh, left full-time ministry, I didn't have a job. I just knew I can't be here and do this anymore. And it was one of those moments where I said, okay, God, we're going to do this. And if I make the, this is the biggest mistake of my life, then fix it. You, you can fix it. And it actually wasn't a week later where I applied for mission marketing and then was able to begin working for mission marketing. When I left ministry, I had no idea what was next. I knew I enjoyed the online component of, of ministry. I thr uh, thrived in that. That's where I found my passion. And I knew I still loved the church. And I allowed myself to release mm -hmm. what the expectation of what ministry is. And it really ended up being a saving grace in my life where I found my passion again and able to have a stronger and further reach and influence in the kingdom of God than what I did before. Mm. Well, yeah, guys, thank you very much for uh, sharing your heart. I know it's it takes a lot to come on a podcast and and talk about you know your issues, and so I, I really appreciate that. And I think everybody listening here will, would say the same thing. And and um, you've blessed us with this information and just some of the things you guys shared. So super super grateful for you, both of you guys, um, and you too, Bart. Um, I, I want to go back though. My parting shot here would be what David, um, kind of what David said was, "Hey, it's okay, you know, <laughs> it's okay to say, is this not the most healthy spot for me to be in ministry right now? Does God have something else in mind?" And so, it, my words of wisdom are: it's your relationship with God is number one in your life. Yeah. Number two is your family. Number three is your, I guess, the church. <laughs> but you can choose to cheat the church. If it, because if that interferes with one and two, that's not healthy. Mm -hmm. That's not healthy. And you got to address that and, um, and really pray about that. Yeah. So, cause I know a lot of people who have had to struggle with that. And that's always been my advice, my advice. So Bart. That's it, man. Thank you guys. We appreciate you a ton. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast, if you stuck it all the way out to the end, um, God bless you. We thank you for being uh, being along on this journey with us. A hundred episodes. I recently <laughs> heard a statistic that said something like, you know, 82% of all podcasts that get produced, produce one episode and no more. So the <laughs> fact that we've gotten, we've gotten to 100, that's saying a lot. So uh, yeah. Jason, thanks for uh, doing the show with me uh, for 100 brother. episodes. And David and Zach, thank you guys for being a part of our team and for sharing with us today. Thanks for having us.